Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Skyscape TCG. Now first things first you're going to be seeing here is this awesome game mat and this is brought to you by Team Samurai X1. Now of course I am not actually being sponsored by him, I am just letting you guys know about this sexy amazing play mat right here. And I actually got this and it's a limited edition play mat for 130,000 subscribers for Team Samurai X1. Now if you don't know about Team Samurai X1, he is actually a Yugi tuber, which means uh, just making videos on Yu-Gi-Oh! And he actually has, well, 130,000 subscribers right now, and he just makes uh, deck profiles and just videos on Yu-Gi-Oh! in general. And I seen that he had this amazing playmat right here, uh, awesome Exodia and Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon over there, uh, just duking it out, you know, classic. And I thought, you know what, I really wanted to get this. So I bought it, and I think he's still selling them, I'm not all that sure, but if you guys actually want to check out Team Samurai, if some of you guys are actually fans of Yu-Gi-Oh! out in the uh, subscribers, definitely, definitely check them out. Uh, again, not sponsored, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys the sexy playmat just to get into today's video. Uh, so, another thing that I wanted to mention is I've actually been kind of busy. Uh, that's mainly just due to schoolwork and the fact that I have a job. And I am a high school senior, which means that graduation is actually just right around the corner. And that means a lot of studying for finals. So I probably won't be making that many videos uh, very soon. But as soon as graduation just hits and I'm out of high school, I can probably just spend more time on making cards. And definitely just more time on giving you guys content on both YouTube and on the Game Crafter. And speaking of the Game Crafter and YouTube... The two decks for, well, the beginning of Skyscape are coming out very soon. And that is very awesome. And I will tell you guys more about that amazing, awesome stuff on the Game Crafter in future videos. But one of the things that I really wanted to mention was the fact that I recently discovered that during my time focusing on schoolwork and studying, I actually missed out on the date of my one year anniversary on YouTube, which is very, very important. So what I really wanted to do for you guys is I wanted to do something special. And I thought, you know what, it has been my one year, I really need to do something special for these guys. So one of the things that I really wanted to do in this video is I really, really just wanted to give you guys the option to actually have a create your own card contest. Now I've seen other big uh, YouTubers like this do this before with their homemade TCGs. Uh, Chaos Galaxy for one example. But I thought, you know what? For the very first set of Skyscape, because it has been a year since you guys actually uh, started subscribing back in the original Skyscape TCG Productions 1, this is 2, it's been a year, so I just figured, you know what? Design a card. Uh, and how we do the design a card contest would be you have to be a subscriber to Skyscape TTG Productions to this channel. You have to like this video, you have to comment that you want to be in the competition, and you have to email me in my inbox, which is Productions at gmail.com. And once you do all those things, you will be entered into the competition and what the competition is, is to design a Skyscape TCG card. Now, this can be a summon card, meaning a full art of a character design that you have seen. Now, if you're confused on character designs, check out some of my previous videos. I have some pretty interesting designs for creatures, and that could maybe help you guys out. But some of the main creatures that I know that people will probably try to make are humans, elves, orcs, dragons... And if you guys have checked out a few of my past videos, Minotaurs, and of course the Vol, that being V-O-L, my original design. So if you guys actually do want to check out uh, the competition and make a character card, that is perfectly fine. If you guys want to design a weapon for life, balance, order, death, rage, creation, or blood, bone, carbon, or iron, do that. Or make a shield, make a relic, make an arcane. There have been videos in the past, which you guys can check out on this channel and also the other channel, to determine uh, some of the rulings and just kind of how the cards look. Uh, but one requirement, make it a full art card. 
Do not put any of the guidelines in it as I do have the templates online. I will do the templates for you guys so that will be all good. But just make some artwork and uh, yeah, come up with a cool effect as well. Maybe some flavor text. If you're confused about some of the rules, just inbox me and I will make some things clear. Uh, and also just check out some of my previous videos as well. But for this video, I wanted to show you guys something special for the one year anniversary of Skyscape TCG, instead of just telling you guys about the competition. So, one of the things that I wanted to show you guys was the first of the two decks for the very beginning of Skyscape TCG. That being the Revenge of the Eternal Berserker. And in that deck, we have the promotional card, which is of course none other than the amazing Dagger of Blood. Now the cool part about Dagger of Blood is that it has only a life cost of 1 and a massive fatality of 3. So you're paying 1 life to get out a card with 3 fatality, which in Skyscape TCG is actually unheard of. Because normally you'd be paying 1 life for 1 fatality, 2 life for 2 fatality, and so on and so forth. But this guy is 1 for 3, which alone is insane. However, his effect, being that he is one-handed is even more insane, and he's blood type, but his main overall effect is that when this card would be severed by arsenal replacement or by card effect, you get to shuffle this card into its owner's body and then gain one life. And if you guys remember what body means, you get to shuffle it back into your deck. So body is deck. But what's arsenal replacement, you ask? Well, if I have a one-handed weapon and another one-handed weapon on my field in my arsenal zones, and I want to get out a two-handed weapon, I have to get rid of both of those and then play my two-handed weapon. So it's just kind of a way of clearing the field. So you're replacing the cards in your arsenal. So that's what arsenal replacement means. So if you try to get rid of this card by doing that, just to make your field stronger, or if it gets severed by card effect, you could shuffle this card back into your deck and then gain one life. So it filters itself out, guys. So if this card gets destroyed by a card effect by your opponent, you practically pay zero for this. Because you gain that life right back. Plus it has a massive three fatality. So this card is going to be one of the most strongest cards in the original two decks. Because a three for one is insane. So that is Dagger of Blood, which is the main promotional card of the deck Revenge of the Eternal Berserker. Which is the first deck in Skyscape. And as you can tell, the deck is a mainly aggro, aggressive, I want to beat you down kind of deck. So, continuing on with that format, we have the Arcane card, which is a Response Arcane, which is Devastate. Now, if you guys do not know what a Response Arcane is, this is pretty much cards that you can play from your hand, and if it says Response, you can activate them on your turn or your opponent's turn, or at any time that the card says it's available. So this card is a 3 life cost card, rage type, response as we just already talked about, and its effect is that when you play this card, you get to sever target blocking shield, which is insane because if you attack something that's stronger than you, you can just sever that right away. However, you reduce all combat damage from that battle to zero. So that means if your card would take any combat damage, it's reduced to zero. So that means your cards are still as high as they can be. So Dagger of Blood over there is still at a massive three fatality and doesn't take anything. Doesn't lose that one point at all. But that also means that your opponent doesn't take any damage. But in this deck, if you're trying to use Devastate, you don't care about dealing them damage in this case, you just want to get over that pesky shield. So this definitely plays into the idea and sense of it being just a straight up beat down deck and I want to destroy my opponent. So going on from that, we have a good cycling card in case you get any uh, just duds in the deck, which of course is the Stone Sigil. Now Stone Sigil is pretty unique because its effect is that it is a relic card that costs 2 for the activation, meaning every time that you activate this effect here you have to pay 2 life, but the effect is pretty good. That being you have to pay 2 life to discard 1 card from your hand, then draw 1 card from the top of your body. So this pretty much just filters stuff out, so if you have a dead card in your hand, and you just really just want to get rid of it, you can just say, okay, play this, get rid of my card that I don't need, let's say Devastate for example, then I can bring Dagger of Blood to my hand in case that's the top card on my deck, and I just get to filter some stuff out. That's a very good card for just filtering out stuff, and this can actually be used in either of the two decks available, but for today, we're just talking about Revenge of the Eternal Berserker, which is 
deck number one, the offensive deck. The next deck will be the defensive one, and I hope you guys will definitely be interested in that, and that one's coming really soon. But continuing on for this deck list, we have the amazing Gauntlet of Iron. Now this card's actually pretty unique because it costs two life, and it is a one endurance card. Now, two life for one might sound pretty weak, but its effect makes up for that. And this effect is that if this card under your control has the Stone of Crimson Blood attached to it, you get to treat this card as a weapon, with this card may attack one additional time per turn for each relic attached to this card. So this card will be able to just attach a whole lot of relics to it, and it will become a weapon that gains hostile. And if you guys don't know what hostile means, it means it's able to just attack as if it was a weapon. And it gets one additional attack per turn for each relic attack to this. So that means that this card will be on its own if it's attached to Stone of Crimson Blood. It will be a one fatality weapon that can attack twice. Which may not seem so strong, but we have to take a look at the Stone of Crimson Blood to see what the card does. And this is the Stone of Crimson Blood. I know this is Ancient Stone, but that's just due to a writing error. Uh, just ignore that. But Stone of Crimson Blood's effect is as follows. It costs two for the activation cost. And its effect for the activation is, if this card is in the relic zone, pay this card's activation cost and target a weapon that you control. Then increase that card's fatality by two until the end of the turn. So if you play this card, you can make your Dagger of Blood go up to a massive 5 fatality, attack, and then after combat it loses that 2 fatality that it gained, going back to its original. And that's just insane, it definitely plays into attacking harder, faster, and just being an overall beatdown of a deck. But its secondary effect is that you may attach this card to a Gauntlet of Iron that you both own and control, so you can't just use your opponent's card, you have to both own and control both of the cards. And if you do, each weapon you control gains 2 fatality. So, alone, that means that your Dagger of Blood would be at 5 if it's equipped to the Gauntlet of Iron, which is freaking insane, and also, it would mean that this is a 3 fatality weapon that can attack twice per turn by just these two cards alone. However, one thing that you guys do have to know, and I'm definitely going to put this in the rules, if this relic is attached to another card, meaning if this Stone of Crimson Blood is attached to the Gauntlet of Iron, you cannot activate the activation cost or the activation effect of this relic, meaning that you cannot do, if this card is in the Relic Zone, pay this card's activation cost and then target a weapon and make it gain two. So you can't gain two for all of your weapon's fatalities and make it gain an additional two because it is not in the Relic Zone when you do that. It is instead in the Arsenal Zone equipped to the Gauntlet of Iron. So, those are just some of the basic ideas and combos behind the amazing, just, Revenge of the Eternal Berserker deck that I have in mind for you guys. And again, this is coming out very soon on the Game Crafter, and in addition to its counterpart, which is the defensive deck, which I will talk about next week. And just a little spoiler for that deck, it is the promo card for the deck, which is Armored Shield which, again, is the counterpart to Dagger of Blood, which has one life cost and it has a massive three endurance. So this will be another promotional card that is just so good that anybody who plays defensive definitely wants to run. So this is just a sneak peek spoiler for the next deck, and that deck will be coming very soon. And I'll just show you guys just some of the cards about that in the next video. But for now, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Bye!